Welcome back. So we've been talking about the maximum likelihood estimation technique for estimating the unknown parameters of a probability distribution function P given some uh, sample data capital X. This is a really powerful method in statistics for parameter estimation that also generalizes pretty nicely to machine learning and Bayesian statistics. So today I'm going to give you some useful properties of the maximum likelihood estimation or estimate and talk briefly about how, uh, how these properties work and what they mean for using this in practice. Okay, so we essentially have this log likelihood function, little l of theta. Theta are, are our unknown parameters of our distribution. We call the PDF, the probability density function of our distribution, little p. I think in previous lectures I called it little f. It doesn't matter. That's just the variable name that I've called this function. And the data, the sample data I have is capital X. So that's an actual collection of data, x1 through xn, a sample of n data points. And we're going to use that data to estimate this unknown parameter. So the idea is that the likelihood function or the log likelihood function tells you what is roughly the chance or the probability, the likelihood of observing this data capital X given that specific set of parameters theta. And when we plug in the data, th these become numbers, this PDF, we plug in actual numbers for those variables x, this becomes entirely a function of the unknown parameter. And if we maximize that function, that likelihood of the data given that parameter theta, then that maximum likelihood estimate theta hat is our guess uh, or our estimate of the unknown parameter theta given the data x. Okay, so this is a nice uh, estimation procedure. The properties I want to tell you today, there are two really important ones. The first property is that theta hat is what's called consistent. And consistent specifically means that theta hat approaches theta true, whatever, if there is a true underlying parameter, let's say this is a Poisson distribution and there's an actual honest to goodness parameter lambda that's, that's, you know, was used to generate the data, then our estimate will approach the true value as our sample size n approaches infinity. Okay, so we get this nice convergence of our estimate to the true value in the large data limit. Very, very important um, notion of consistency. We want this kind of also means that our estimate is unbiased. It it's also means that our, our estimate is unbiased. And the method of moments, theta hat, is also a consistent estimate of, of theta. Okay, so method of moments and maximum likelihood estimation both give consistent unbiased estimates of the true parameter values in the large n limit. But they might converge at different rates. These different methods, there's lots of different ways of estimating parameters from data, and some of them will converge faster than others, meaning the, the theta hat might have more or less variance as a function of n for different methods. Remember, theta hat is itself a random variable because it's based on, you know, these random variables. It's a function of random variables. So theta hat has a mean and a variance. And consistency means that its mean value is the true value of the parameter. The second property that I want to tell you, and this one's really, really cool, is that our estimate theta hat, theta hat, is a normally distributed random variable, in, again, in the large n limit, is normal, where the mean, normal, there's an L, the mean is the true value, so this is uh, theta true, and the variance is 1 over n times this funky function called I of theta true. Okay, I'm going to define this right now. We're going to define it and show how it can be used. But basically, the thing that actually matters is that theta hat, our estimate of the parameters, is a normally distributed random variable. Maybe I'll draw a little picture here. So our theta hat is a normally distributed random variable centered around the true value. I'm going to call it theta true. And it has some variance 
that gets smaller as n gets bigger. As n gets bigger, the variance gets smaller, and this gets to be a tighter and tighter estimate of the true value in, as, as we get more and more data. Okay, So we've seen this before. This is not a new concept. This is, looks a lot like the central limit theorem. It's different, but it looks like the central limit theorem. And it tells us a lot of information about this estimate. It's very, very useful. And it allows us to do things like calculate confidence intervals. So we can use this to calculate confidence intervals, uh, intervals on our estimates um, theta hat. It also allows us to do things like design of experiments. How big of an n do I need if I want my parameters to be estimated within a certain tolerance or percentage threshold? Um, very, very useful um, to be able to put bounds on the variance of this distribution. Okay, And so now I think what I want to do is define this weird i function that I've kind of put in the denominator here. This i function is pretty, um, pretty interesting. So let's just write this out. So I'm going to define i of theta equals the expected value, expectation value of partial, partial theta of my log likelihood um, L of theta. So I'm going to write it out explicitly, log uh, P of X given theta. Okay, so I take the partial of this log likelihood with respect to theta, and I take its expectation value squared. This is how we are defining this I function. Now, to actually show where this comes from is a little bit messy. Um, maybe I'll do that in a future video, but it's kind of an aside that'll take 10 or 20 minutes and it's pretty messy. But it's it's some function that's useful. It's the partial of, of, of L with respect to theta Essentially, if you like, this actually isn't that complicated to write down. This is, um, maybe I'll do it in pink. This is just the expectation of L prime theta squared. Okay, that's what that is. It's the expectation of L prime theta um, squared. Remember that the optimizing value theta hat m maximizes L of theta, so L prime of theta would be equal to zero. So you can start seeing that this, this has, you know, it's related to this optimization problem. Um, and there's another kind of useful property here. This value of I theta is also equal to the negative expected value of the second partial derivative, partial squared partial theta of log P of X given theta which again, I can write as minus the expectation value of the second derivative of L of theta, L double prime theta, okay? So I'm not telling you where this I of theta comes from. It is the expectation of L prime squared. That is what it is, it's useful, but this expression here that theta hat is normally distributed around the true value means it's unbiased, it's consistent, and it says something about the variance. This is computable. That's the real upshot here, is that this is computable, and it says something about the variance of this estimate as n goes to infinity. As n gets large, we can say, kind of bound the uncertainty in our estimate theta hat using this formula. Very, very useful. We can use this for things like confidence intervals. Now, showing that theta hat is normal, very, very challenging. Deriving this I of theta, pretty messy. What I want you to know are these facts. These are useful facts about the MLE. Okay, It's consistent, and more than that, it's normally distributed with a calculatable variance. Good. And so this consistency is useful. And this second property where we can compute the variance, we essentially say that the maximum likelihood estimate theta hat is asymptotically efficient. And I'm going to define, I'm going to write it down, and then I'm going to define what that means. So we say that the MLE is asymptotically efficient, asymptotically efficient, which means that as for large n in the large n limit, this will be the estimate that converges to the true value 
faster than all other estimates. You can't write an estimate that will convert of the, of the parameter theta hat that will converge faster than the maximum likelihood estimate, at least in the large limit. In the asymptotic n goes to infinity limit, this is as efficient in data as it gets. And this is a lot like in the fast Fourier transform, if you are more familiar with like engineering, you know, signal processing. The fast Fourier transform scales like n log n. And what that fast scaling means is that for very large n, it's approximately linear scaling, which is about as good as you can do. So that's what we mean by asymptotic scaling, is that in the large n limit, it performs about as optimally as you could hope for. Okay, you can't beat this asymptotically. It's asymptotically efficient in the size of the data set n. Now again, very hard to prove. I'm not going to do that. I'm just telling you useful facts about the, the maximum likelihood estimate. Um, and this uses something important called the Kramer-Rau inequality. I'm going to tell you what that is. So this uses the Kramer-Rau inequality. So you probably remember Kramer from linear algebra and determinants and things like that. And the Kramer-Rau inequality essentially says, given uh, IID data, so I identical, independent, identically distributed data. They're from the same distribution and they're independent draws, uh, x1 to xn. And an unbiased estimate, an unbiased estimate of the parameters of the distribution, theta hat, and I'm going to explicitly say that this theta hat is a function of my random variables, because it is x1 to xn. Remember, up here, this likelihood function, we've plugged in our data. So it is a function. The maximizing theta is a function of our random variables of our data. So theta hat itself is a random variable. Okay, so given some IID data and an unbiased estimate of the parameter theta hat, then the Kramer-Rau inequality says something really nice about the variance of this distribution. It says that the variance of our estimate, this here is the variance of our estimate, the variance of our estimate is always greater than or equal to 1 over n i of theta. This is theta true, okay? Um, and this is true for any distribution, for any, from whatever distribution these x's are drawn from, this is true for all, you know, p of x given theta that is smooth. As long as the probability density is smooth, this is true. And what that says is that the variance of theta hat is always bounded from below. It can never get less than this value here. Okay, so it's always going to be worse. There's always going to be more uncertainty or, or equal to, to this value. It's either going to be more or equal to this amount of uncertainty or variance in this theta hat uh, distribution of our uncertain estimated parameter. And because in the large n limit, our MLE estimate has exactly that variance, that is the lower bound. So you can't do better than this uh, maximum likelihood estimate by the Kramer-Rau inequality. Okay, so proving this, super hard, proving this, pretty challenging, deriving this, messy. That's all, you know, stuff you can look up in textbooks, ask GPT, go on the internet. But I want you to see the big picture here, that the maximum likelihood estimate is unbiased, and it's asymptotically efficient, and you can compute its variance, which allows you to do useful things like write down confidence intervals for your estimate. Super, super useful properties of the maximum likelihood estimator. Thank you.